Homework、uh, for Chapter Four: Pure Bending. First,、uh, we got to read the related chapters. Homework four point one: For pure bending moment of five kilo newton meter, and what we illustrated here, pure bending moment, five kilo newton meter. On hollow beam, this is a hollow beam or box beam, rectangular cross section. We are looking at a cross section, and、uh, the wall thickness is uniform, ten millimeter. Wall thickness is uniform, ten millimeter, and the cross section dimension is given here. Fit a hundred millimeter tall, fifty millimeter wide. Please calculate the stress, normal stress, at point E inside at the top, and F outside at the bottom, respectively. Okay. So again, this is the cross section wheel, and the bending moment, the vector goes along positive z direction. What we draw here is a so-called coupled vector, which means you are going to use right-hand rule using the、uh, sum to go along the thicker、uh, arrow, which is a vector m, and stretch straight the palm. Let the beam goes through the palm in. Into the palm, going out, and from the palm to finger, that is the direction of the bending, which means ends up. Okay, that's what we said.、Uh, for the hollow rectangular beam, box beam, the cross section moment of inertia. What we learned in statics, cross section moment of inertia would be one over twelve b one h one. To the power of three minus b two h two to the power of three. B one and h one are for the outer dimension. B two and h two are for the inner dimension, since it's a hollow box beam. And then what is b? What is h? Remember we said in the class b the base that we assume would be parallel to the bending vector moment. Bending vector moment, and H would be perpendicular to the bending vector moment. So here the bending vector is going along horizontal z-axis. So the B、uh, would be parallel to B1 would be 50 millimeter or point zero five meter, and、uh, B2 would be 50 minus 10 on the left. Turn on the right would be 30 millimeter or 0.03 meter, and H1 for outside, as you know, would be 100 millimeter, and H2 for inside would be 100 minus 10 on the top and 10 at the bottom, so would be 80 millimeter or 0.08. And you plug the number in, you get the moment of inertia for the entire cross section would be 2.89 times 10 to the power of minus six. We have the unit of meter to the power of four. Okay. So now let's look at for the E point. E point is upper and inside, and so the distance from E point to the neutral axis would be half of this a hundred minus the wall thickness fifty would be fifty minus ten would be forty millimeter. So the axial normal stress sigma, I'm writing absolute value, would be m y over i. M would be the bending moment, which what we said is five thousand newton meter. Y we said、uh, just above for E point would be point zero four meter or forty millimeter. And I we just calculated for the entire cross section and plug the number in, you would get. And the result, okay,、uh, it will be compressive at E. It will be compressive at E. 
On the other hand, for f point at the bottom, the y distance from the neutral axis would be just half of the total height, would be 50 uh, millimeter. And uh, the axial normal stress sigma x would be m y o i. Again, I'm taking absolute value and uh, plug the number in, you get the result. Okay, and it will be tensile. So, again, how do we know it's tensile compression? Based on the coupled vector, as we draw, we said it's, con it's bending up or ends up, which means if you look from the side view, remember the top is a cross section view. And if we view from the side, the beam is long, very long. And of course, I'm not drawing to scale. And um, the M, the bending vector, would be going concave up or ends up and e point would be at the top inner surface and f point would be at the bottom uh, outer surface of course e point as you can imagine would go through uh, compression compression while f point will go through tension or pulling longer okay homework 4.2 the beam cross-section show here is made of polymer. It has a T-shaped cross-section. It has allowable tensile stress of 25 megapascal and the compression stress of 30 megapascal, which means the maximum stress in tension cannot exceed 25 megapascal and the max maximum Compressive stress cannot exceed the 30 megapascal for this polymer material that is used to make the beam. It has a T-shaped cross-section. We want you to calculate the largest bending moment or bending couple that can be applied to the plane of symmetry at the cross-section. Okay? To the plane of symmetry at the cross-section. Again, remember, you are looking at the normal cross-section for the beam. The beam goes out of the screen towards you and into the screen far away from you, assuming it, it is straight, okay? Um, prismatic beam, the same cross-section. So to, to do this, the first part is to determine the cross-section moment of inertia. Um, and to get the moment of inertia for this entire T-shaped cross-section, we have to break it into two parts. And it's what we illustrated here. And it's what we illustrated here. The part one on the top and the part two at the bottom. So for part one, for part one, the area, or we call A1, would just be uh, 20 millimeter times 50 millimeter or 0 0.02 meter times 0 0.05 meter and you get uh, the area for part one and the location of the centroid for part one from you can calculate from the bottom or from the top in this case I'm calculating from the bottom the y1, the centroid location from the common bottom, as you can see, would just be 20 plus half of 20 would be 30 millimeter or 0 0.03 meter. Similarly, for part two, this rectangle part at the bottom, again, this is on cross section, the area would be very simple 25 millimeter times the difference which is 20 millimeter and you get the cross-section area and the y2 the location of the centroid for part 2 would just be half of the difference which is 20 millimeter by divided by 2 or 10 millimeter or 0 0.01 meter okay so we separated the cross-section into two parts we're going to ass assemble. So this is the overall cross section. We separate into part one and part two. We know the uh, area for part one and part two, as well as the centroid location for part one and part two. Then the 
for the entire T cross section, the location of the centroid uh, would be as you learn in statics, the Y average, the location, the Y location for the centroid for the entire T-shaped cross section would just be A1, Y1 times A2, Y2 divided by the total area. Okay, and from previously we know A1, we know A2, we know Y1, and we know Y2, and you can get the average uh, location. The location for the overall centroid for the entire T cross section would be slightly higher than this um, kind of part one, part two interface. It's at 23.3 millimeter from the bottom. Okay. Then for the entire T shaped cross section, the total moment of inertia, total moment of inertia, and what you learned in statics would be the summation of each part moment of inertia plus AIDI square. What is AI? The cross section area for I part and DI square would be the distance from that part uh, centroid to the overall cross section centroid, that distance di and to the power of two. Okay. And for these two parts, we can just write um modern inertia for each part, one over twelve b one h one to the power of uh, cube plus a one d one square. Again, a one is the area for uh, part one on the top and D1 would be the distance from part one centroid to the red point, which is the overall cross section centroid. Similarly, for part two, you can do the same. Uh, B2, H2, for example, B2 would be just a 25 millimeter, H2 would be 20 millimeter, and A2 would be the cross section area for this part two, and D2 would be from the part two centroid to the all cross section centroid okay and then uh, you plug the number in you get this number and from previously that's what we got the average centroid for the entire cross section and the overall t-shaped cross section moment of inertia then the maximum tensile stress maximum tensile stress because of the mo moment bending moment that you draw based on the right hand rule again you have to use the sum going uh, along this right right hand go sum going along the bending vector and make your palm side facing the beam let the beam going into your palm and outside from the back side and make your palm straight going from the palm to finger that's uh, what the direction of the bending and in this case if we view from side it will be concave down on uh, inch down okay so of course the top surface will experience maximum tensile stress and the sigma uh, actual normal stress I'm taking an absolute value would be mc over i should be smaller than the uh, allowable tensile stress and as a result, the moment that can be applied has to be equal or smaller than uh, allowable axial normal stress for tensile times I divided by sin uh, C, maximum dimension for uh, tensile. And uh, we said for tensile case, the allowable stress would be 25 megapascal, which would be 25 times 10 to the power 6 pascal times I, the moment of inertia for the entire cross section, and C, the maximum dimension one can be away for tensile situation. Remember, the red dashed line is our centroid location for the entire cross section. It's at 23.3 millimeter from the bottom. So the, the C, for tensile would be from top surface to this red would be total 40 millimeter minus the the centroid location which is 23.3 millimeter and you plug the number in you get one 
condition. The m has to be smaller than 30 value when you consider the tensile stress at the top to be smaller than our allowable value, which is 25 megapascal. Similarly, maximum compressive stress would occur at the bottom. We said the moment uh, it's bending moment this again this is a illustrated coupled vector for the cross section so when you view from the side it's bending concave down or ends down or ends down so similarly mcoi using absolute value but the allowable compressive stress is slightly higher we study 30 times 10 to the power 6 uh, pascal 30 megapascal i for moment of inertia for the entire cross section, which is the same, and the C compressed maximum dimension, one can be away from neutral surface for compression, compressive stress case, which is occurring at the bottom, which is just be 23.3 millimeter. You plug the number in, you get another condition, okay, for M, moment of inertia. So overall, the maximum bending moment that can be applied will be the smaller of the two. Uh, condition for moment inertia, sorry, for uh, bending moment, and uh, which you get the answer. Again, the maximum moment that can be applied will be the smaller of the two M values that we are getting, okay? And that concludes homework 4.2. Homework 4.3, a flat, 10 millimeter wide 10 millimeter wide this is um side view this is cross section view mm, kind of like a a prime a a prime cross section view side view cross section view long strip of steel is bent into part of a circle initially flat bent into part of a circle due to a pair of bending moment with radius of curvature 100 millimeter, 100 millimeter, which means from here to the bending radius of curvature is 100 millimeter by two bending couples. Of course, it is not drawn exactly to scale. We want to calculate the maximum thickness, thickness, okay, from top to bottom, from top to bottom, thickness of the steel strip if the allowable maximum allowable stress is 400 megapascal okay that's part a we want to know the thickness of the strip maximum thickness of the strip and uh, and second the with the dimension designed the corresponding bending the corresponding moment applied to reach maximum stress if you know the elastic modulus is 200 gigapascal e for young's modulus or elastic giga mo uh, modulus so you can use uh, in this case the um, assuming pure elastic behavior if you what moment uh, should be applied to reach maximum stress of 400 megapascal okay Let's look at part A. We want to know the maximum thickness of the steel trip. Thickness, the uh, dimension in this direction. We know uh, the bending radius. We know the width. Okay. So again, go back to our equation learned in chapter four. Sigma max axial normal stress. I'm taking absolute value is E C over rho. Again, E is elastic modulus. C is maximum dimension one can be away from neutral surface for pure bending. Rho would be um, radius of curvature because we know radius of curvature. Okay. And this maximum value has to be smaller than allowable value, which is 400 megapascal. And as a result, the thickness of H value in this dimension, H value would be 2 times of the half the the maximum dimension one can be away from the neutral surface because it's a symmetric cross section top and bottom symmetric so h would be 2c and what is c based on this uh, result c would be uh, equal or smaller than 
allowable stress times rho divided by Young's modulus. So H would be 2 times allowable stress 200 megapascal, 200 times 10 to the power 6 pascal. And E, elastic modulus, we said is 200 uh, gigapascal, 200 times 10 to the power of 9 for giga times pascal. Okay, uh, elastic modulus 400 megapascal, 10 to the power 6. And then rho, we said is radius curvature is 100 millimeter, 100 millimeter. And then you get the answer of the maximum H or maximum thickness when you look at the cross section. Okay, thickness H. Second part, the same problem. Um, we want to know the corresponding moment applied when the maximum stress A is 400 megapascal. Okay, so sigma, the um, actual normal stress would be MC over I, has to be smaller than allowable stress. And the C, as we, what we said, is half of H, and we just got it. I would be the moment of inertia for this entire cross section, and uh, the bending moment are drawn this way, concave down or inch down. And the B would be the dimension that is parallel to the moment of vector. So in this case, B would be 10 millimeter. H we just calculated from previous and uh, simplify m stays half um 1 over 12 that becomes 6 h and h cancel so we in the denominator we have bh to the power of 2 smaller than allowable stress so m as a result would be allowable stress divided by 6 times bh to the power of 2 Allowable stress we know is 400 mega 10 to the power 6 um, uh, Pascal and 6 keep and uh, B we said is 10 millimeter or 0 0.01 meter H square H we just calculated from previous slide will be this number and as a result you get the moment should be smaller than certain Newton meter value. Okay. Homework 4.4. A composite bar having a aluminum plate, aluminum plate, this gray colored aluminum plate, sandwiched between two copper bars, one copper bar on the top, one copper bar at the bottom. Okay. We know the material property. E AL for aluminum elastic modulus is 70 gigapascal. Our Young's modulus for aluminum is 70 gigapascal. The allowable stress for aluminum would be 100 megapascal. Okay. And for copper, the material property are E brass. Uh, elastic modulus for brass would be 105 gigapascal, higher than aluminum. And the allowable stress is also slightly higher, 150 megapascal. Okay, so we know the um, it is a composite, symmetric composite bar, and we know the cross section. This is the cross section view for that long bar with four centimeter in one direction, thickness of 2 cm for aluminum and 1 cm and 1 cm for top and the bottom copper bar. Okay, again, this is the cross section wheel. We want you to calculate the largest permissible, largest the allowable bending moment. Bending moment. Again, this is drawn in the coupled vector format. Okay, when the composite bar, this is cross section wheel, is subjected to bending moment about a horizontal axis and pseudo straining. So, this is cross section wheel. The moment vector is pointing towards the left. Okay, this is a coupled vector drawing, which means in reality, 
the composite beam going out of from the screen is bending concave up or ends up, both ends up. Okay. We want to know the largest permissible bending moment that can be applied for such a composite bar. So uh, as we learned in this chapter, for this composite um, bar, one way to solve this problem is to trans transform this composite bar into a uniform single material bar. And to do that, you can either transform the copper into aluminum or from the aluminum into copper. Okay, we for this uh, homework example, we transform the center aluminum, this gray part in the center, into equivalent copper, into equivalent copper. So when we do from aluminum into copper, we define the M factor, the ratio between aluminum elastic modulus to copper elastic modulus would be aluminum 70 over copper 105 and that is 2 over 3 or 0 0.667 that is the factor to convert him from aluminum to copper m factor so then for this uh, transformation the base for the aluminum the base for the aluminum, remember the, the base should be parallel to the bending uh, moment vector. So in this case, uh, the bending moment vector goes this way. So it is this dimension, this four centimeter for aluminum has to be transformed. So the equivalent uh, copper base for the center would be aluminum base four centimeter times this M factor. So 4 cm times 0.667, you would get the equivalent pure copper bar to look like an I-shaped bar with the center uh, equivalent width of only 2.667 cm. Okay, so um, from a composite bar, we converted into a equivalent pure copper bar with the center aluminum transformed into equivalent copper and because copper has higher modulus it doesn't need as large weights from stress point of view okay so now we finished the uh, transformation again the dimension that will be transformed is the dimension that is parallel to the uh, bending vector bending vector to the left indicating this bar again you look at the cross section wheel would uh, bend the concave up which means both ends up and that four centimeter transform to 2.667 centimeter by four times this ratio this ratio of aluminum to copper ratio okay so again left side is cross section view for the copper aluminum copper or brass aluminum brass composite bar the right side is the equivalent of pure copper bar pure copper bar okay and uh, the vertical the uh, the other dimension one centimeter one centimeter two centimeter two centimeters one centimeter one centimeter doesn't uh, transform because they are perpendicular to the bending uh, moment vector Now that we finished the equivalency transformation from a composite bar into a equivalent pure copper bar, the center aluminum transformed into copper, but uh, the distance, the weight would be four times that factor, and it's 2.666, and so you have a gap on the left, a gap on the right, and each of that gap, we call the B2 would be 0.667 centimeter. Then for this transformed cross section, the centroid, because of uh, its symmetry, the centroid is just the center. The centroid or center of gravity for this transformed I-shaped cross section would just be its center. 
under the moment of inertia for the transformed cross section. I transfer. I for moment of inertia transfer for the equivalent transformed cross section will just be one over twelve b one h one to the power of cube minus two b two h two to the power of three. Okay, b one again would be the base which is four centimeter. H one is the total height for the cross section. It's also four centimeter. Okay, and B two uh, would be this small uh, recess width. It we said it's just uh, the four centimeter minus the center two point six six seven centimeter divided by two. B two would be point six six seven centimeter. Okay, H two would just be the recess height would just be uh, same here two centimeter. So when you plug these number in, you, we would get the moment of inertia for the transformed I-shaped cross section, okay, around its uh, centroid, on the center of gravity, which is right in the center, okay. Why do we have two here? Because we have one recess on the left, one recess on the right, and they share the same um, a neutral axis, okay. Then we have the uh, from previous slide we have the moment of inertia for the transformed cross section. Then for the maximum stress in copper, maximum stress in copper it either occur at the top surface, it will be compressive stress, or at the bottom surface for tensile stress. Okay, and uh, again moment of inertia. From centroid in the plane of symmetry going towards the left, from the right hand rule, you would know that the beam coming out from the screen is bending concave up or both free ends up. Okay? As a result, the top is experience compression because it's bending concave up or ends up, while the bottom is experienced tensile. So the maximum dimension one can be away for copper. For copper, C C U would be half of this two centimeter plus uh, this one centimeter. It's the same value for the top part compressive or for the bottom part, which is uh, two centimeter or point zero two meter. So if we look at absolute value for the axial normal stress sigma max for copper would be M the moment applied for this entire equivalent cross section times the maximum dimension one can be away for copper divided by the moment of inertia for the entire I-shaped cross section. And this whole thing has to be smaller than our allowable copper uh, stress, which is 150 megapascal. So as a result, the M value, the moment uh, the largest moment that one can apply when we consider copper alone would be smaller than M would be sigma times I divided by CCU. And sigma we said is 150 mega 10 to the power 6 pascal. And um, I transform from previous slide is 2.04 times 10 to the minus 7 meter to the power of 4. And the CCU we said is just the uh, maximum dimension one can be away from. The, for the copper, compressive at the top, tensile at the bottom, but the absolute value is the same, would be um, 2.02 uh, meter or 2 centimeter. And as a result, you get the moment, uh, limit on moment, when you consider copper. Similarly, now let's consider aluminum. But aluminum actually only goes up to here and here. So the maximum stress in aluminum occurs when the C value is one centimeter, as what we illustrated. Uh, compressive stress on the top at this interface or tensile stress at the bottom at the other interface. But the C value is the same, both one centimeter or 0 0.01 meter. Similarly, the axial normal stress for aluminum 
is remember we for aluminum would be the conversion factor transform factor times the equivalent copper um stress would be mc over i transformed we are calculating first for copper and then we convert trans converted that into aluminum m is the amount of inertia for the entire cross section c aluminum is just this distance is one centimeter upon zero one meter i transformed is for the entire equivalent transformed cross section amount of inertia and it has to be smaller than allowable aluminum stress so as a result m should be m should be allowable stress for aluminum times um moment of inertia for the equivalent transformed cross section divided by n divided by the cal the maximum dimension one can be away for aluminum so allowable stress is 100 mega mega 10 to the power 6 pascal i transformed from previous um, calculation we know is 2.04 times 10 to the minus 7 meter to the power of 4 and n this aluminum to copper can a factor is 0.667 so for aluminum it's just you put this n here and then the c aluminum is one centimeter of 0 0.01 meter and you get another limit on the m value so overall the maximum bending moment allowed would be the smaller of the two m calculated by considering um copper and for the equivalent and by considering uh, aluminum and it will be the smaller of the two value and you get the answer okay homework 4.5 a plastic long cylinder support with radius of four inch four inch from center to the surface it's four inch for this cylinder long cylinder support is subjected to five thousand pound of axial force axial force um, parallel to the x uh, axis okay going in we want you to determine the axial normal stress at the um, b point at the top uh, when y reaches maximum when the a distance is zero and when the a distance is two inch when a equals to zero that will just be centric force when a equals to two inch that will be so-called eccentric axial loading so knowing the moment of inertia for the cross section moment of inertia for the cross section this is moment of inertia around the z-axis bending around the z-axis would be one over four pi r to the power of four 1 over 4 pi radius to the power of 4 okay so first case very simple when a distance is 0 which means the force just goes along the x uh, longitudinal axis for this cylinder then simple it will be just a centric loading and uh, we should have uniform axial normal stress distribution and the axial normal stress at the B would just be force over the entire area. I put a negative sign because it's pressing in, it is compressive. Force, we said is 5,000 pound of force. Area is pi r square. And the radius we know is four inches, pi r square. And you get the answer again, negative sign for compressive stress because it is pressing in the external force is pressing in at the end surface for this uh, cylindrical long circle okay then when a equals to two inch and the five thousand pound force is parallel to the axis this is the situation of so-called eccentric axial loading eccentric means it's off center axial means it's per parallel to the longitudinal axis for this cylinder okay eccentric axial loading so the resulting bending moment the resulting bending because it's off center the resulting bending moment will just be the force times the displacement from the axis 
5,000 pound times 2 inch, that would be 10,000 pound inch of pure bending moment. So the, as a result, the maximum normal stress, actual normal stress um, at the B point where the Y value reaches maximum would just be what we learned before. It would be a superposition of the centric loading force or area plus the other term which is the um, stress due to pure bending due to pure bending and we already know the bending moment so you plan this part the force over area is what we already calculated and you have negative sign because it's a compressive force mm, compressive force resulting in compressive stress and then m c over i m and what we said is 5,000 times 2 inch, 10,000 pound inch, C, maximum dimension, um, the dimension one can be away from axis for B point, and in this case, we said it's outer surface, it would just be radius, which is 4 inch, I, we, we were given, which 1 over 4 pi radius to the power 4, and then you get the answer. Again, the negative sign is for compressive stress. It's for com compressive stress, which means this long beam will bend, as what we illustrate, will be concave up or ends up. Okay. Homework 4.6. A member is subjected to loading force in the vertical plane of symmetry, as illustrated. So this number. Um, we only show the top part looks like an L-shaped and it's long in the vertical part and uh, the horizontal part it gives a distance from the load to the one edge is 5 cm. Okay, in the plane of symmetry, so this is a side view, it looks like this and uh, from the front view, which means looking from the right side towards it, it will look like this with the top corresponding to this part and the bottom correspond to that part of course it's long so we sh I break it up here and then from the top view from the top view the load p it shows a cross which means it's going down and the p of course from the top view is in the plane of symmetry or from front view it's in the plane of symmetry okay and fg is in the front uh, <clears throat> here on one side and ih is blocked um, by fg on the other side and if you look from the right side you can see g and you can see h g corresponds to here h corresponds to here so again this is uh side view kind of l-shaped but uh, rotated front view like this to or you can call it uh, looking from the right towards left and then the bottom is a top view from top down looking down okay that's a geometry of load in the plane of symmetry if you look from the top view or from the front view or from um one side looking from right to left um, for this L-shaped, okay? The, we know the allowable stress in the horizontal cross-section, FGHI. So if you look from the top, imagine you can cut it, you have FGHI. Here, or look from the side view, F and G on one side and the I and H are blocked. I is behind F here, H is behind G here, okay? And uh, uh, if you look from the other side, F is behind G and I is behind H. Okay, so that's the geometry. And uh, for we want we know that the allowable stress in this cross section uh, is one hundred megapascal. So we want to know the largest force, P, that can be applied. As you can imagine, when the P is very small, it's safe. But when the P goes larger and larger, it's um, eccentric axial. 
we mean eccentric, which means this P is not going along the uh, vertical axis for this FGHI um, axis cross section and uh, eccentric axial, but it's parallel to its axial uh, longitudinal axis. Okay, going down. So we want to know the largest P, and when you can imagine when P goes to larger and larger, F side will, it will experience tensile stress and G side experience compressive stress. At a certain moment, F side will start to um, break or fracture or experience failure. So we want to know what P value uh, we can apply. It's a very practical problem, and quite often you see this. So um, to help us visualize I kind of like uh, draw it again. And uh, this time I draw the vertical a little bit longer because here we have it short, but we have break to show it is actually pretty long. And then P is going vertical, it's eccentric axial, it is parallel to the axis for this uh for this one, but it's eccentric is not going through the axis it's at some distance d away from that distance okay and then as you can imagine because because exactly because it is eccentric axial with the p of course i'm drawing an exaggeration it's going to cause um, this vertical part to burn it's going to cause the vertical part to burn and the net effect would be two one is as if the P is acting vertically in the uh, longitudinal axis for this cross section, a uh, centric force. The other one would be the pure bending, pure bending M. M is P times the dis off center distance, the D, and it's bending, pure bending. One M on one side, M prime on the other side, M prime equals to M. Okay, and uh, based on the analysis, the M, the pure bending moment uh, would be P times D. And what is D? As you can see, D would be five centimeter plus half of this FG distance, which is five plus two over two. Two centimeter, but half of it would be um, one. So five plus one would be P times six centimeter. That would be the equivalent uh, pure bending moment. So this whole problem we can separate into a linear addition or superposition of two problems. One is as if P is acting as an eccentric force. The other one is pure bending M. And the M is P times D and which is P times six centimeter. Okay. Then this is still our schematic. And then let's look at the centric one. If P for the centric case, P is acting in the longitudinal axis. P is, is as if it's acting here. So the stress would be F over A. I put a negative sign because P is going in, it's pressing in. So it will be compressive. And what is the A cross section for the normal cross section perpendicular to this longitudinal axis? And so you would look from the top view, it would have four centimeter in one dimension and two centimeter in the other dimension. So it would be two centimeter times four centimeter. That would be the normal cross-section area for this FGHI cross-section. So P over this and P over eight centimeter square for minus sign indicating P is pressing in the centric uh, force creates a centric uh, compressive stress. We call it a sigma x centric. Um, on the other hand, the max, maximum axial normal stress, normal, which means perpendicular to this FGHI uh, stress, axial, which means along the longitudinal axis is going in, going down here, going in here from the top view, and the axial normal stress for pure bending from what we learned in chapter four would be minus mc over um would be minus mc over i and um, why minus because i'm more concerned with uh 
comprising comprising stress. Okay, and what is our M? From previous slide, we know M is P times D or P times six centimeter. And C, C is a maximum dimension one can be away. What maximum dimension one can be away for this pure bending situation, the neutral axis. So this is our effective M. Okay, the um. Bending moment vector is drawn upward, which means if you are going to use your right hand rule, uh, you put your thumb along this arrow direction, uh, make flat your palm and let the beam going into the into the palm and out from the back side of your hand, and then from hand to the finger. That's the bending direction and. Uh, That's uh what that's what we show here. Okay, it's going to as you can see the outside F side or I F side will experience tension and the H G side will experience compression. But anyway, the maximum dimension you can be away from the neutral axis. Neutral axis is a parallel uh, to the moment vector, and neutral axis would be here. Okay, would be here. So the distance C would be half of two centimeter or one centimeter, and then I more of inertia for the cross section of uh, interest. So when you use, of course, it was one over twelve b h to the power of three. But what is b? Remember, we said b is parallel to the moment of in. Uh, to the bending moment vector. So our bending moment vector goes this way. So the four centimeter IF or HG length would be our B value, while the FG or IH value is two centimeter would be our H value. Okay, H would be perpendicular to the um, bending moment vector. So simplify the maximum bending stress here we consider the compressive stress on the hg side would be 9p over 4 centimeter square okay and uh, given these so the maximum compressive stress maximum stress from these two combined effect one is centric one is pure bending would be just a linear addition of this one and the centric, we get it from previous uh, slide, p over 8 centimeter square, minus sign indicating compressive. And the maximum bending, we are also considering the compressive component. So then we got um, minus uh, 8 double 18, 9 double 8. 8 double become 4 double become 8, 9 double become 18 plus 1, 19. 19 p over 8 centimeter square and then if we consider absolute value is this absolute value has to be equal to or smaller than our allowable normal stress value which we said is 100 mega pascal so as a result you get p should be 100 mega pascal 10 to the power of 6 newton per meter square times 8 centimeter square 8 times 0 0.01 meter to the power of 2 over 19 and you get the answer in newton or in kilonewton so it is a kind of a relatively complex problem it is loading in the plane of symmetry but eccentric axial okay because of this, because of this load, we are going to cause the uh, the vertical part to kind of bend and the off center. And this we said it we can treat it as combination of one is centric load, one is pure bending. And we solve each of them and then we add them up together and make the total absolute value to be smaller than our allowable value. And then we get to solve the uh, maximum amount of load or p we can apply okay last problem homework 4.7 the bending moment couple is applied to a beam 
with rectangular cross section. You look at you are looking at the normal cross section of the beam. The beam uh, goes from the screen to outside and goes inside. In a plane forming an angle, the moment is forming an angle of 30 degree. This 30 degree from the horizontal xz plane. Horizontal xz plane. X axis you cannot see, y axis up, z axis to the left, x axis actually going from the origin out of the screen. Okay? So you have a moment applied at an angle theta away from z axis that theta is 30 degree deg and we want you to calculate the axial normal stress at points e f and g okay we want you to calculate stress in particular normal stress axial along x axis at points e f and g okay so to solve this the first um, Similar to what we solved before, the first step would be to resolve the bending moment, the bending moment M around the two uh, axes. One is Y, one is Z. So bending moment around the Z axis, bending moment around Z axis. Okay, this is the bending moment vector. So the bending moment vector along the axis will just be M times cosine theta cosine theta, which m is 500 pound inch, theta is 30 degree, and you get 433 pound inch, that's mz, the bending moment, the moment that tries to bend the beam around z axis, or the bending moment vector will be going along the z axis, okay? And because of this mz, the maximum stress, the maximum axial normal stress, the maximum axial along x axis or x direction, normal stress caused by mz would be mcoi. Of course, here m would be just mz, and c would be the maximum dimension one can get away from the z axis because we are bending around the z axis. Okay, and the I Z would be the moment of inertia for the cross section around the Z axis. So M Z from above is 433 pound inch, and C D the maximum dimension one can be away from Z axis, and you can see would be half inch, 0.5 inch, and I Z would be the moment of inertia around the Z axis, would be 1 over 12 b h to the power of 3, but b should be parallel to the z axis, our bending axis. So b would be 0.5 inch and h would be 0.5 plus 0.5, 1 inch to the power of 3. And you plug the number, you can get the uh, absolute value, the maximum axial normal stress. Maximum, highest axial means along the x axis perpendicular to the normal cross section um, due to mz is this value 5196 psi pound per square inch and uh, similarly bending moment around the y axis you resolve the m uh, along z axis and along y axis the bending moment around y axis and y would just be m times sine theta. m times sine theta. And m is 500 pound inch and sine theta. Theta is 30 degree. Sine 30 degree would be 0 0.5 times 500 would be 250 pound inch. That would be a moment trying to rotate the bend the beam around the vertical y axis. And as a result, the sigma normal stress along x axis, the maximum value it reaches due to bending moment, and y ultra, due to bending around the y axis would be same, mc over i, but everything would be around the vertical y axis. And y we just said is 250 pound inch. And see why the maximum dimension one can be away from y axis. So it will be half a 0.5 or 0.25 inch. 
and I y moment of inertia around the y direction would be one over twelve b h to the power of three, but b would be parallel to the neutral axis or this um here. As a result, b would be uh, 0.5 plus 0.5 one inch, and h the dimension perpendicular to b would be just 0.5 inch, and then you plug in the number, you get 5,997 psi. Okay, that is the maximum normal stress in the cross section due to m z alone and due to m y alone. Then now let's look at at point uh, e upper left hand side corner. So as you can Im imagine, mz, mz is bending the moment around z direction and mz is causing at E compression because it is above the vector. And um, on the other hand, my, my is along y axis and my would be causing the E to experience tension. So if we're going to write uh, the total axial along x axis, uh, normal stress for E point would be those due to Mz and that is compression. We put a negative sign here plus the maximum stress due to My, but it's tension. We keep positive. Okay, of course, in between in them we use absolute value so we would have a answer for the e point similarly for point f for point f and mz is also causing compression because it is on the upside of this um bending moment vector on the other hand uh, for f point uh, m y will also be causing compression so as a result the total axial normal stress for y point would be two compressive stress uh, together. One is due to mz is negative, one is due to my is also negative or compressive. And you get a second answer, which is for the local stress state at f point. Finally, for point g, finally, for point g, mz is causing tension. Okay, because the bottom will be stretched longer, well, M Y will also cause it to tension to, to cause it to expand. So we have positive and positive. Each of these are the maximum normal stress due to certain moment uh, component. Okay, and you add this up together, you get the final stress for the G point. Okay, and uh, that concludes the homework for chapter 4.